Gina McCarthy, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down and talk with us here at the Weather Channel. Thanks, Rick. Describe your new role as the first ever National Climate Advisor and what your priorities are. As a presidential advisor, I like to keep the president up to date on what's going on on the climate front. But more importantly, I uh, am managing his all of government approach to tackling climate change. That's really what the president is asking us to deliver a climate plan that is strong on economic benefits, that will grow good jobs, union jobs, and that will allow us to invest in our infrastructure. If there was one piece of legislation that you would like to see passed or passed first, what would it be? I think I'd like to see us buckle down to make sure that by 2035 we have a clean energy sector. And part of that is advancing a, a uh, clean energy um, system, um, a system of making sure that we set some goals that, that these clean energy facilities have to achieve. They call it a clean energy standard, they've called it a bunch of different things, but what it means is this is where we need to head, this is the value it brings to everybody and let's get there together. And I think the utilities themselves are game for looking at these types of approaches. They have asked us to think about them because they provide lots of flexibility across the country on how to get to that clean energy future. While you were at the EPA as the administrator there, you made a, a very strong connection between environmental policy yeah. and public health. What are your main concerns from this point forward uh, with regards to health and the climate? Well, my main concern is that we have to invest in resilience and we do have to get to this clean energy future because that means much less pollution. And one of the things we saw during the pandemic was that the, a lot of the black and brown communities, the indigenous populations, and folks that were struggling with low income, or at this point, no income, were hottest hit by the pandemic. And that's just telling me that we've had a lot of communities that have been disinvested in and left behind. And one of the big steps that we need to take and President Biden's committed to in his American Jobs Plan and his resilience plans is to make sure that the benefits go to the communities that have been left behind. And that's everything from how do you build green spaces in those communities, make them walkable, give them transit that allows them to get to work, make sure their kids don't have asthma just because they live on a neighboring highway and you've got all those gasoline powered vehicles or diesel powered trucks that are causing the air pollution. So there's a great marriage here of thinking our way out of the climate drama that's going to also deliver some real health benefits to the communities that need it most. How optimistic would you say you are about meeting the goals for 2035 and 2050? And how do you keep everybody optimistic in the face of such huge challenges with the climate? Our job um, in our small and mighty climate task force um, using this whole of government approach to look at what we can deliver by 2030. It's called the Nationally Determined Contribution or NDC. And you're going to see our trajectory for the NDC is an aggressive one to let the rest of the world know that we have a plan and we're gonna get there.